thank you, Kyle, for doing this little interview with me today. Sure thing. Um, I'm excited to kind of learn more about how we've implemented LMDB and all that good stuff. Um, and so I'll, I'll just share, share what I know. And, and you know a lot because for those, for anyone that listens, this was Kyle's main project that he worked on when we were working on the cloud and getting it up and running. He spent almost all of his time getting this implemented. So it's like basically your baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's been something that's been on my mind, um, really for almost two years now. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that as we, as we talk about this. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, let's dive in. So my first question, pretty basic one. Um, what is LMDB for people sure. that might not know? Um, so LMDB, it's a really fast, really lightweight, um, key value store. And the one differential with LMDB is the embedded data store. So that means that it embeds in your code. It doesn't run as a separate server. Um, it actually acts as a library and you just call functions on that library to execute the functions that you need. So that keeps it really lightweight because there's not some extra resource running on the side. Um, so it actually just runs in line with our code. Awesome. And we love lightweight and, you know, <laughs> compact here at Harper DB. So yeah, simple, good fit. As simple as possible. <laughs> yes, all of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how does Harper DB use LMDB on the back end? Sure. So LMDB um, is our new data storage mechanism. So when we started the company um, over three years ago, our initial data storage mechanism was something that we had created a patent around um, and it was mm -hmm. based on the file system. And so when you inserted, let's say you're doing an insert, um, a record or an object, we would break it all apart by attributes and then store each element separately as a file. Um, and that had some real good benefits, but it also had some real big trade-offs. Um, and one of the big trade-offs was searches. Um, mm -hmm. Also, there were some issues on the file system um, as well with things called inodes. Um, and on scale of data, it sort of fell over on itself with our mm -hmm. old data mechanism. Um, so... For LMDB, that's our replacement data storage mechanism, and it allows us to still do um, data modeling very similar, breaking things apart and auto-indexing and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, for each table, the way we implement it, it's one table is what's called one LMDB environment. Um, so one file per table. So we minimize the inode overhead <laughs> significantly. <laughs> um, and, uh, LMDB is primarily built to be a uh, performant for reads. Um, so we get that read benefit that we were trying to overcome as well. We had a lot of other benefits, but um, the short version to my <laughs> long answer is a replacement data store. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And didn't doesn't LMDB help with performance too? Or is that more the all a SQL side of it? Um, well, so we did do some performance and improvements in the ALA SQL side. Um, so Sam Johnson, one of our um, engineers, he had done a lot of work on um, our SQL engine to improve that. But there is the lower level below that is is the data itself. And we got significant performance improvements from um, CPU utilization, memory utilization, mm -hmm. disk utilizations really across the board we got significant improvements just from the hardware utilization of your, of your uh you know computer server yeah. <laughs> whatever it is that you're running um and yeah so a lot of performance improvements and then also speed um on top of that and so things just run a lot faster and it's due to the architecture of lmdb itself um they the way they implemented it, it's uh, very unique in the world of key value stores, at least from what I've researched. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone here at HarperDB is a fan 
of LMDB for sure. It's, it's a really cool, it's open source, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's yep. an open source, uh, it's an open source project and we're using a node library because LMDB is written in C and HarperDB is written in node. The really nice thing with node is you can, uh, import C as native node modules. Mm -hmm. Um, and another open source, uh, contributor had created a great library for LMDB for node. Um, and that, yeah, it was a big game changer. And they, the implementation of it was very simple on the node library side. Um, but mm -hmm. we're essentially using two uh, open source libraries that sort of like the bigger fish is eating the small. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good analogy. <laughs> uh, so what, Obviously, from what we've already talked about, it's been easy, but can you tell me more about the implementation process, what that was like? Um, and, you know, maybe also, I'll just move this question up my list because it goes hand in hand. Was there anything that you disliked um, about, you know, implementing LMDB or, you know, what were some things you really liked? Yeah, I think, um, if you don't mind, I think it also goes in line with, like, why did we select LMDB? Because it, it really, the implementation, uh -huh. these, these are all very tied together. Um, totally. So, uh, about, so I'll probably jump to the why did we select LMDB, and it'll... I'll tie in. <laughs> yeah, I'll fall in. Um, so, like I said, this is something that I've been thinking about for two years, uh, almost two years, and it really came down to we had uh, a couple a couple POCs that we were working on, and um, we the feedback that we got from the POCs was really enjoyed the product, but the read performance um, was not what they needed, um, and so I had done some analysis on our uh, data model and what was happening and had just identified where the gaps were. Mm -hmm. um, and just given the nature of file systems and the way we were implementing it, it wasn't something that felt very easy to overcome without writing our own file system kernel and things like that, which mm -hmm. it could be complicated. Um, and around the same time, we were also um, getting some feedback from investors uh, and other people in the technical community around um, really what they were saying was uh, databases use multiple data stores. Uh, like MongoDB has multiple data stores. Uh, MySQL has different ways of using uh, data stores. It's pretty common that mm -hmm. the underlying place that you store the data is ultimately decoupled from the database itself. Um, and so it's kind of smart to swap things in and out and give options because depending on use cases, they may, someone may want to use a different data storage mechanism. Um, and so it just kind of got us thinking about that. Um, but, you know, we also had a lot of other <laughs> projects going on, a lot of things we to accomplish. Um, and then around a year ago, we had partnered with um, another company where they had a proprietary key value store. We'd worked with them on implementing it. Um, we learned a lot. It was sort of a co-development venture. Um, it ultimately didn't work out, but we learned a lot through that process. Of And through that, it really guided us in to really understanding that implementing an alternative data store, and especially a key value store, was really the way we needed to go. Um, and so, you know, when the pro that co-development uh, project fell through, um, I uh, spent the end of 2019, so about a month the end of 2019, evaluating different uh, key value stores um, with all the things that we've learned um, and also making sure that whatever new technology we want to implement doesn't break our core uh, mission, um, which is simplicity, uh, dynamic data model, uh, single data storage with SQL, no SQL, all the things that we always talk about, um, were very important for making it very easy for developers to uh, have, you know, put data in, get data out, uh, and be able to do complex querying and simple querying, all those things, analytics. Um, so I evaluated, evaluated a lot of different 
products, very quickly, some of them washed out um, just because maybe, you know, if you need to add an attribute, you had to rebuild the entire schema um, or some of them looked very cool, but it was, uh, you could only use it in Go uh, and there was no node module for it. Uh, so that also immediately eliminates that from the running. Um, you know, looked at some things like level DB um, and looked at, uh, I don't know, there was a bunch of different things I looked at, um, but LMDB was always at the top of the list. Um, and I just found it just by searching on high performing key value stores. I actually had never heard of it until when I started looking in December of 2019. Um, and, uh, but the more I read about it, the more it made sense. Uh, and it was embedded. We didn't want to run a separate server. Uh, it was really lightweight. There was a great node module built for it. Um, I could build a dynamic schema around it. It was just very lightweight and it didn't put a lot of constraints on us in order to implement. Um, so once I sort of did like a very quick bake off, I then started digging into through the month of December, can we mimic HarperDB? our existing data model. So creating, uh, not implementing it into HarperDB, but creating a very similar data model as if it was in HarperDB and then running workloads through that sample. Um, and then I did right at the end of 2019, early 2020, I did uh, a series of tests running these like high scale workloads of like doing inserts and different SQL queries. Uh, and searches and all these things, comparing it to um, our file system data model to um, LMDB. And in some workloads, LMDB was, I think it was 600 times faster. Um, that was on wow. bulk, yeah, it was bulk <laughs> CSV loads. Um, but then even for queries, it was, oh man, I think it was around like 60 times faster or something like that. Um, and just like, on all workloads, it was better than what we currently had. And so I did a write up and I disseminated that to the team. And, you know, because also it's a big level of effort at the same exact time. We were also uh, determined that we also needed to roll out a cloud product. And so, you know, Stephen and I sat down and had a very long conversation um, because what resources did we need internally to do this? And uh, and Stephen just finally said, he's like, well, can you do this yourself? And I was like, yep, I can, I can do this myself. Cause also knowing that our, uh, creating our managed service was extremely important. Um, and really they went hand in hand. That was the conversation that Stephen and I had was we can create this managed service, but, um, we want to make sure that users that sign up have a great experience, great performance. Um, and so really, even though they're very set, uh, different projects, they tie together. They're very complementary to each other. So, um, the development process, it was from January through March of 2020. Sorry, my dog wants to go upstairs. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Kato. Hi, Kato. <laughs> See you later. Um, <laughs> So, um, yes, so then the implementation process was, um, you know, the approach I took was to do a modular approach. Um, and uh, two of our engineers, uh, Sam Johnson and uh, David Cockerell, um, when they were working on that um, code development project with the other uh, companies, Key Value Store, they had already broken out and created a mechanism for us to decouple the data storage from our core logic. Um, so there was already a pattern in place. So I already, they saved me probably months of work. Um, so creating this modular design of creating the core functions that just does, you know, the create, read, update, and delete operations, you know, and also managing um, the tables, which LMDB calls environments. Um, so when you create a table, we need to create this environment. And then create an attribute. We need to create, you know, separate key value stores inside there. How do we track all that? Um, so there was a lot of wiring that was specific to us, so that it would then bubble up and make sense for HarperDB. 
Um, and so it's creating these like foundational modules and functions um, is where we start, where I started and then building unit tests on top of that. So for everything I built, making sure that there was testing um, and testing all the edge cases, because then I would test something and, and realize, oh, that doesn't work. So going back, <laughs> um, and probably the most complicated thing I had to spend time on was search, which is no surprise. Um, but, you know, it's just like adding layers on top of layers on top of layers and just doing this modular design. But it took three months. Um, and then, you know, testing took about another month. And then it basically lined up. It was hardened by the time the uh, managed service was ready to deploy. So the timing all worked out really well. Mm -hmm. And Alan, you... <laughs> manage me on that and I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Um I know um, I'm just thinking back to that implementation process when at one point you were like, wasn't it you that you said you had a hundred um errors when you did a test and then you fixed like one thing and mm -hmm. then it just like fixed and I, that just like was crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, there I can't remember what I fixed was, but yeah, there it was like heartbreaking too, because I I think I had changed something and then I had had almost everything working and I changed something and then I had like a hundred fails and uh -huh. I, <laughs> this is never going to end. <laughs> and then, and then, right. There was one thing, I don't remember what it was. It's all a blur now. Um, but, you know, as far as like implementing LMDB itself, it's very easy. Um, and the big thing was just part of that POC process was um, creating the data model for the key value store. Um, and while it wasn't one-to-one -one with our old file system mechanism, it was very similar. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, that, and that data model pattern then really drove a lot of everything up from there. Um, and so doing an upfront POC really saved me a lot of time because I already had vetted the product LMDB through that process um, and, uh, had a good understanding of how to work with it. And so there was no surprises. There was some, but, um, you know, uh, it was overall just more like, just, I had all my requirements laid out and it just was like cranking through them. It just was like, I know what I need to accomplish. I know what I need to do. It's just the doing of it and being through that process. Yeah, definitely. I think it speaks a lot to how easy it was to implement and use that you did it alone. And while, while you were in it, it felt like a long time, but three months to me just doesn't seem like that long of a time to like completely implement this new tool. So, yeah. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and to give us the, that level of performance improvements. Um, yeah, it was huge. And you're right. It, like, it's a very easy product to work with. Um, because yeah, if it was complicated, it, I might still be working on it. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't fit with our style here at Harper no, either. It does not. <laughs> uh, and so, I guess you may have answered this already, but what's your favorite feature um, or aspect out of all of them of LMD LMDB? Uh, I have to pick just one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could give me your top five. Yeah, give me your top five or whatever okay, it is. Top, yeah. Um, I think overall, like from an architectural perspective of the product, what I really love about what they did in the implementation is they have something called um, a memory map. Um, and so what that means is when you go to access or insert data, um, the memory, so when LMDB goes to fetch data, it actually assigns the byte address of that file into memory. And so it acts as if the data I'm trying to fetch is in memory. So the very first call to get that item of data is as slow as just pulling it off of your SSD. But then the second call, it's already, the byte address is already cached and mapped in memory. And so it's acting as if it's a memory database, in memory database. So it has the speed of that. Um, but it has the persistence of an on-disk database. And so we're getting the benefits of both. And I, in any other key value store, I've not seen that implementation. Um, and it creates massive efficiencies. And it also aligns with where when we started 
ParkerDB, we wanted to leverage the file system. And that's exactly what Howard Chu and their other engineers have done is they're leveraging how file systems work, how virtual memory works on operating systems and using existing technologies uh, in a really clever way to solve really complex problems. Um, I think that's overall my really favorite thing is like, it's just super smart about and efficient about how they're uh, accessing data. I, I think the other thing too is they're using a B plus tree that just creates really efficient um, searches um, rather than like log structure or uh, LSM, which are um, uh, other implementations like level DB, um, uh, B plus tree. Um, also they're natively uh, acidic. And so meaning, which is in database world, means it's mm -hmm. uh, atomic consistent, has isolation and durability, and that's native to the data store. And so we're able to um, lock a transit, like initialize a transaction, anything that we're doing during that transaction does not impede the readers. And so there's no um, isolation concerns. And then that data doesn't show up until we actually commit the data. And if the something fails inside that transaction, it just rolls back. The readers never see it. And so there's this complete um, division between the readers and the writers and the writers and the readers. They don't impact each other. Um, and so it's just a huge benefit to us that we can pass all that off to this great uh, open source project and not have to worry about it. And it's just how we implement it is really what okay. it comes down to. We just have to implement it properly, but the work has already been done. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you've kind of already touched on like what your least favorite thing was about working with the tool. Um, was there anything you wanted to add? Because I know we talked about um, what you had said earlier with the, I'm completely blanking, but with the implementation process. Uh, something that was like something you struggled with. Oh, but it was something on our end. Um, as far as specific, oh, to, okay. You know, as far as LMDB itself, um, uh, you know, I, there, nothing really comes to mind. I'm sure there's things I've struggled with. Um, well, I know there were things I struggled with. You know, just off the top of my head right now. Um, I think it would be cool if there was uh, better data typing. I mean, they support some basic data typing like strings. You can do binaries. Um, you can do numerics. The way the numerics are implemented, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, you can't, the numeric data type doesn't support negative numbers. And that was a struggle for me. But I was able to leverage the binary data type to do that for numerics. Um, but that's the thing is like, even though that was something I struggled with and had to learn how to get around, um, it was simple enough for me to find something else as a workaround and it, uh, it works just fine. So, but at its core, if I had any major complaints, we would probably be talking about another product right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's nothing big just because it's, it's a really versatile data store. Um, yeah. Um, do you have any tips for people that are looking into using LMDB or incorporating it into their product or project? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, just going through a, a good process um, of of like understanding what you're trying to achieve up front. I mean, it's just sort of more basic design principles, but um, specific to LMDB, um, you know, there are some quirks with working with LMDB um, before, like before you uh, begin a transaction, make sure you initialize all of your key value stores. Um, Cause if you try to do it inside the transaction, it'll blow up. Um, so there are some little tricks to how you need to initialize things. Um, was, I'm just trying to think of some other kind of gotchas. Uh, yeah, opening and closing environments, if you do them in the wrong order, you'll end up in a weird state um, with your data or like your process will hang, um, which I experienced one time when I was 
initially vetting the product, I almost gave up because all of a sudden it just started hanging uh, when I was, I think it was when I was trying to do multi-process access to the data store. Um, I wasn't opening and closing the um, environments properly. And all of a sudden I went to do an insert and it just hung. And I was like, um, this doesn't feel good. <laughs> but then I, I, you know, there was good community support and I was able to work my way through it. Um, I actually, to go back, another aspect I have is favorite aspect of LMDB is um, one of the big communities that uses LMDB is the data science community in Python. Um, and so there's a big community that uses it. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, um, Stack Overflow articles and posts that I could access to understand how to use LMDB. So while I'm using it in Node, it's still the same tool. It's just the language is different, but the way you interact with it is all the same. So I was able to get online help with that, having to reach out to the actual LMDB team. Mm, yeah, that's nice. How long has LMD, LMDB been around? So they, Do you know? <laughs> yeah, so it was initial release was uh, 2011. Um, so it's been around for nine years. So it's like, uh, that was the other reason for choosing it was it's a well-established product. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, you know, nine years is a long time to work kinks out and bugs out and understand different architectures. Um, you know, so having, making sure it runs on Linux, runs on Mac, runs on uh, Windows, things like that. So, like, those are just basic. But then, like, different file systems, I'm sure they've had to work through a lot of different permutations, but we have the advantage of time. Um, so we're not, while we're working on a very cool product, it's it's not like bleeding edge where it just came out six months ago. Yeah, definitely. Um, and maybe you don't have anything you would change because I know you've been just speaking so highly of it, but mm -hmm. if you could change anything about HarperDB's implementation of LMDB, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, it's so new right now. Um, uh, probably nothing. If you talk to me in like six months, I'll probably, <laughs> I mean, I've already done it. Um, but for now, I feel like it's it's really solid. Um, you know, we're through our managed service, we're having users hit it and mm -hmm. straight downloading the product. And we've not had any issues with, you know, data writes, data reads at like a very low level. Um, so the implementation now feels really solid. And, you know, again, giving kudos to Sam and David, um, they created a really good backbone for me to build on um, as far as like modularization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the data model is very similar to the data model that we always envisioned from starting the company. So at this point, uh, nothing. But again, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's only been couple months since I finished <laughs> well we'll have to like check back in and do a follow-up interview but I mean that's amazing that's what you want right if yeah. you want to feel solid with what you've used and what you've implemented so yeah I, I mean the key thing is like <laughs> I, I like any issues would not be on LMDB itself it would just be on what we did on top yeah. of it. But I, I, uh, I don't see any right now there's nothing it's more about what I want to do with it yeah <laughs> and on that note, that's like perfect leading into my final question. <laughs> what, you know, what future changes or additions or like you said, what do you want to do in the future mm -hmm. with LMDB and HarperDB? Where do you see that going? Yeah, so there's like, I think some real near term. Well, there's one thing I'm working on right now. So um, for our clustering mechanism, um, uh, which we had uh, rebuilt like a year ago. Um, when we had rebuilt that, um, I had, in order for like catch ups or um, when you're basically it's a transaction log. Um, and so when you have multiple nodes connected to each other, you always have to anticipate network outage. Um, and so one node goes down, it comes back up, and you need to say, hey, we haven't talked to each other in about five seconds. What did I miss in five seconds? And so the way I was storing that was just in an append blog. Um, and it was pretty fast, but um, with LMDB, 
um, I'm actually working on this right now of using LMDB as a transaction log so that we can use it for clustering um, uh, to do catch ups, but also doing it for, um, let, let's say you did a commit on a record and you want to roll it back. Um, so there's some potential use, use cases of saying, hey, let's roll this data back or maybe roll it forward. Um, uh, or also just like auditing, just you know, having an audit trail um, for your data based off of users, based off of time, based off of primary key on the table. Um, and then the other more low level thing that um, I really want to do at some point is um, more uh, strict data typing on some attributes, which means so natively, like when we store the data uh, key or value, it's stored as a string, um, and which is fine. But in some instances, when things are numeric, they're stored what's called lexicographically. Um, and so to do range searches, we would have to do the like scan the entire index to get the numbers you actually want properly and on scale that can get slow. Um, so I wanna implement just numeric data types, probably date data types as well. Um, super conceivable are we have, when you add data to HarperDB, now there's um, automatically created timestamps. And those timestamps are numeric timestamps. So we have a pattern for it. It's just exposing that to um, our customers so that when they define an attribute, they can say, oh, I want this to be a number, I want this to be a date. And then it'll create um, some better constraints for their data on that. Very cool. It sounds like you have a long list of things you wanna get done with LMDB, so that's awesome. Um, and that actually was my last question. So, I mean, if there's anything that I missed or something that we didn't touch on that you wanna share, um, definitely feel free, but I mean, it's just, it's cool to, you know, I've watched you implement it, but it's kind of cool to just talk about the process and like how you came to LNDB. It's very interesting. Yeah. It, you know, one of the things I did, uh, I don't know, it's part of the, the process, but like, uh, I guess maybe it's just my anxiety in general, but you know, while I was implementing it, I was constantly researching LMDB because also I wanted it, I guess I want some confirmation that I wasn't crazy. Um, and the more I researched, the more I read and the more use cases I found that made me feel more confident about the choice that we made for this to be like our uh, default underlying data store. Um, it's great products. Um, I hope someday, you know, we get to talk to Howard Chu who created it because um, he's super smart. Um, it'd be, a, I think, a cool conversation with him. Yeah, I think it, I would love to like send this to him. I'm sure he'd be stoked to hear all of your feedback. Um, and it would definitely be cool to do a similar showcase that we did with our All a SQL, with the yeah. All a SQL team. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something we should look into and maybe getting on the books, depending on if he's open to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so too. I think he lives in Colorado. But I'm not really? Sure. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I think he might be on the Western Slope, but I'm not totally sure. That would be super cool if he was living right next door to us. <laughs> <laughs> he's just down the street. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. Well, thank you so much for your time. And sure. I am excited to write up some info on this awesome interview. And I'll definitely share the recording out. and. Yeah, I appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, no, thank you. This was great. Thanks so much.